Okay, so this is Mike Levin again with Bike Preserve reporting for Elephant Journal and for Zoobird. And we have with us Jeffrey Dussault from Louis Garneau. And by sheer coincidence, uh, Jeffrey is here touring from the upper reaches of the British Columbia down to the lower reaches of uh, Oregon via bicycle. I'm going to show you his bike. I'm going to talk about the equipment and all sorts of interesting stuff. So let me grab the camera and uh, Jeffrey, there we go. Now let's switch sides so that you're in the sun and people can see you and your beautiful bike. Okay, so Jeffrey, what is it that you do and who do you work for? Why are you doing this? Well, basically I'm a product manager for Louis Guano. We make tons of bicycle related stuff from helmets to shoes to clothing to bicycles themselves. And we're based back in Quebec, uh, near Quebec City in fact. And uh, this started 30 years ago and I got a job for all the bi bicycle accessories, some snowshoes, some fitness stuff. So, Okay. And now we have two weeks of vacation, everyone. Awesome. So, yeah. So not only did your employer supply you with a fantastic bicycle, but all of your apparel is yeah. Garneau apparel. Your helmet and glasses. your glasses, your clothing, and most importantly, this Uber bicycle here. So tell me about this bicycle. Well, basically, it's a you know it's a touring bicycle, and um, what do you want out of a touring bicycle? It's, you know, it's something sturdy, so it's all made out of steel, really solid. Steel. Yeah, steel. Yeah. Very good. It's super, super good. <coughs> and you have the gearings, you know, to to go up the climbs, uh, three chain rings at the front, nine speed at the back. So you have enough, like it's mountain bike gear to go up the climbs when you're loaded. So you can put up a uh, hundred pounds on this bicycle and there's no problem going the distance. Okay, so I lifted this bicycle and it seemed rather heavy and there is no concern on your part about its heaviness. No, I think you just need to mindset yourself about the tempo you're going to ride. This is not about racing, this is about, you know, a journey and if you are there just for the, for the speed, this is not your game. So you just need to adapt to another, another rhythm, another pace and you go up the climb with speed, you go up the climb and you go on the planes. But basically, the wind's gonna make your day. If you have a tailwind or headwind, it's, that's the most important part. Okay, so yeah. you talked to me about a couple of really, really notable rides. Oh, for sure. On the Washington States, yeah, Chuckanut Drive, which is just outside of Bellingham. And this is a wonderful stretch of road, amazing. And when you hit, well, you can go to the San Juan Islands, which Orca Islands, beautiful. And then when you hit Olympic Park Peninsula, you got the stretch on the 101, which goes from um, Quilcene to, uh, let's say, Lily Wall. This part of road is totally amazing around the Hood Canal, just aside, ups and downs and turns and rights and mini bays and oyster farms and lovely, lovely, lovely. The sun, the sun hitting the trees, the shades, beautiful parts of road. So for uh, bicycle touring people, uh, what, uh, what advice do you have to give to people, let's say, about the bike, about the equipment, about the route, about shipping their bike? Um, <clears throat> Bike-wise, you want something, well, something tough and something that you can find some parts really easily on the road. If you have something too fancy, something breaks, you're not going to be able to find anything. So going with basic stuff, parts that you could find, that's number one and uh, maybe some extra spokes if you break a spoke uh, on the road. Okay. Um, that being said, for transportation, if you're going from point A to point B, you're not looping. Um, you know, um, a, a card cardboard box is, is more appropriate. Sometimes you're going to have those at the airport, so really handy. You mount, you dismount your bike in those card boxes. You put your luggage in the card box. You have a, a lot of weight that you can put on those boxes. So that's really handy for traveling. And, the, the, well, the for me, the key about touring is about you know going at your pace, at your pace. So really listen to yourself and just enjoy the road. Okay, and I asked you when you uh, pointed out your route, it looked as though there was a highway that went down yeah. from uh, uh, San Juan Islands down to yeah. Oregon. And I asked you how you found uh, safer routes. Uh, well, you don't want to go on the highways, that's for sure, and um, going Google Maps. I know with my iPhone, I just have Google Maps that just can show me without any Wi-Fi, just show me the map. So I just figure out a way to get out of the highway and go on the side. It's possible. 
And then from Portland on, it's 101 all the way down to San Francisco. And 101, you anticipate, is going to be okay Love for... The, yeah, yeah, for sure. There's okay. going to be lots of shoulders. And, well, okay. I hope so. So there, there's a, a writer on the web named The Bike Snob. Have you ever read his no. stuff? Well, anyway, he, he sort of pokes fun at people who wear very fancy apparel like this. But you mentioned to me that Louis Garneau makes some apparel. Like, for instance, your jersey just has one stitch. Uh, not the jersey, the bib itself. Oh, the, the bib. bib itself is part of the well, new connection we introduced last year. And it's course collection with the helmets and stuff. So uh, with the shoes, it's all a collection about you know the apparel for elite cycling and man those feel comfortable the less stitching the more comfortable there is so, so not everybody gets their clothing for free no. uh, <laughs> so if if someone wants to uh, to dress appropriately for touring what would you recommend uh, well investing in good equipment good saddle a good bib that's for sure jersey is not you know it's something breathable but the bib for sure if you go some long distance bib is important saddle is important and uh, yeah and I mentioned to you that I picked up a vintage bike while I was here in Portland, and yeah. I said it was a 57 centimeter. You and I are about the same height, like 5'9 or 5'10, yeah. and you said, 57 centimeter, how can you ride that? Size. What do you talk about size and the fit of the frame? What do you think about that? Oh my god, the size is really something personal, and you know, for me personally, from the first bike I had to the, this one, it's 54, and you need to go top to distance. The seat tube distance doesn't mean anything. It's really the length of the bicycle, the top tube length that's really important on the bicycle. And that's what you need to remember. And for me, 54 right there, that's the appropriate size. Okay. So, but with this bicycle, I'm, <laughs> I'm almost upright. While racing, we're really, you know, down in the, in the drops. But uh, it's just another, another mood, another tempo for riding. And you mentioned that you do some writing. So yeah, do you yeah have a, I keep a journal in, on Facebook. So your Facebook page, how would people see that if they'd like to? Oh, well, the, <laughs> it's not a, like a public page. It's like my personal page. So Okay. They cannot, and it's in French, so it's going to be a, a bit hard, but whatever. Okay. And, yeah, it's only accessible through my friends. So. I see. Okay. So, anyway, well, thank you very much, and look for this on Bike Preserve, Zoobird, Elephant Journal, and... Uh, have Thanks a, a lot. Yeah, have, awesome. a, have, a, have a very good journey. Thank you. Bye-bye.